I now invite Mr. Nilesh Patel, who is the Chief Executive Officer at Lead Squared, and he'll be talking about what we can learn from EdTech. So, uh, what I wanted to uh, talk about today is, uh, you know, what uh, our classic, uh, you know, education system uh, learn from the new age uh, EdTech companies, right? I mean, uh, and we are the uh, for we are fortunate to work with some of those, and uh, whatever we have learned, I wanted to kind of share uh, some of those uh, you know, ideas with you to see if uh, some of those can be applied to your respective institutions to you know, basically uh, you know, do better than what you're doing today in your own, uh, own ways. So the idea is uh, what can we learn from EdTech? So Baiju's I'm sure uh, you know, most of you would be familiar with. Uh, you know, we started working with them in 2014, really smaller name then, not many people were aware of it. And at that time, learning from app was, uh, you know, was not something which was very familiar. Not, anybody, not many people were doing it in India, but they actually pushed forward that uh, agenda. And uh, today they are you know, one of, one of the you know, well-known uh, names in the, in the industry. Um, this would be, I'm um, not sure, a very familiar name to a lot of you, but they're again a very fast-growing company, uh, trying again to help uh, students learn by creating a marketplace model where you know, they connect and and sort of monitor the teacher, they pair the teacher with the student. And so again, a very, very uh, you know, good story going in the market. And what can we learn from these two and some of the others um, out there? So first thing, uh, first thing, if you see the new age entrepreneurs and, the, and what helps them uh, you know, build some of these uh, types of businesses, and as we know, a lot of this, uh, some of them fail as well, right? So the, the, the key ingredient of the story is uh, you know, their impatience and aspir uh, to succeed, right? They, the aspirations are high. They want to sort of you know do things fast. Uh, they want to you know you know they, they want to try multiple things. If it breaks, that thing shuts down. Kind of keep uh, you know uh, keep uh, improving whatever is working for them, right? So I think that's the the one aspect uh, which we have seen and observed not only in these two uh, you know companies uh, which uh, and other firms which you have seen, but uh, largely all the new age uh, you know all the new age entrepreneurs they're trying to sort of you know. Uh, take head on the whole idea of uh, you know how to grow fast and you know, scale fast fail fast kind of a thinking at the same time the, uh, the this whole thing is again uh, being helped by the capital which is available uh, in we are sitting in the heart of uh, you know in Bangalore obviously the uh, there's a um, and a private equity groups venture capital they're all sort of helping this whole ecosystem to you know, grow and thrive, right? So I think that's, again, being a, a big uh, motivator. But the fact that uh, the capital is you know, made available after they, f they figure out whether you know, there is enough impatience to succeed, whether the, the, the model is good, can it scale, and so on and so forth. So that's one thing uh, you know, which we can uh, look at because uh, you know, the, the, these things will keep happening. You know, people will go and innovate. Uh, and, 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 and break and, and fail fast and scale fast. So how do we, what can we learn from them in our respective institutions to see where can we actually adopt scale and try to you know, do better. Second thing is, uh, uh, you know, as we all know, um, a lot of you probably would order from Swiggy, Zomato and, you know, and other such uh, you know, e-commerce e websites. So food comes to you rather than you go, you go to the food, right? So I think the whole idea of uh, you know, the classic model has been student comes and then we will teach them or it's basically a very very pull uh, method which is being uh, you know being used in in the classic uh, you know uh, system education system uh, but the edtech companies are kind of changing that model to some extent right and making the student experience the center of their uh, one of the key focuses of their uh, you know their offering right so starting from the point of uh, you know making the the stuff available to them at mobile or making their experience smooth after they buy from them how can I uh, how can I keep them engaged, right? How can I understand the student experience? Can they uh, are they progressing well in what they are learning from my uh, you know my my applications which I'm providing the courses which I'm offering them, right? So keeping a control tight control on that is again a centerpiece of their uh, their uh, their existence and what they try to do. On uh, so for example, if a student tries to sign up, I'll try to monitor and help them. Uh, you know, if they are learning, they are progressing at a certain pace through again the, the, the tools and technology available with us. So I think that's again a key cornerstone uh, for uh, some of these uh, ed tech firms and which is helping them uh, because the, the better student experience you offer. So there are two pieces I, I, the way I look at it in the whole, uh, in, in the student experience piece, right? It's like if you have a better student ex uh, experience as an individual for any product or service, the mind share gain is very high for that, right? 
at the same time it comes at a cost of uh, competitions mind share because if you have more mind share the other party will not have as much and hence the ability for you to sell or for them to buy would be much as much higher for you versus the uh, other party so i think that plays a huge role in uh, in basically you know driving a pull for uh, for your brand third is the uh, you know the whole idea of embracing technology i mean i think um, and you know all the education institutions are so busy in in, in obviously teaching students but i think today we cannot uh, you know we cannot uh, uh, look aside the whole idea of how can we embrace technology so what can we learn from edtech right i mean i think the fact that uh, you know, uh, so the key piece uh, of this uh, embracing technology because of scale, there's a lot of automation which is needed to actually drive the efficiencies out. So, for example, if I'm, let's say, uh, you know, coaching uh, 100,000 students, right, I cannot go and look at every student at one time. I need to be able to see what is going in a bucket of students, how many, stu what is the, what funnel of students are progressing from point A to point B, where can I, you know, dive in or do I get an immediate notification saying this student is getting stuck here or these are things I can do for them or taking this whole information out and uh, then giving the information direct to the student. So I think the, the whole idea on embracing technology allows them to scale. So automating their processes which drives efficiency. So for example, in case of some of the, uh, some of the ed tech firms we work with, they go to the student uh, and basically present their, the, uh, the uh, you know, the um, the the product to them now imagine there are you know thousands and thousands of inquiries which are coming in how do i make sure that my field people who are going and talking to customers are basically uh, you know their bandwidth is is getting utilized the the best possible way meaning are they doing x number of meetings per day are they able to show so many product demos in a particular day so if i can use technology if, to kind of drive that efficiency the same may apply for uh, in an institution scenario, so for example, if I'm getting X number of leads, if let's say, for example, I were, there, is a, there are a lot of studies out there that if an inquiry comes in, and if I'm responding to that inquiry in, let's say, five minutes, 10 minutes, or half an hour, or one day, or seven days, it makes a huge difference in closing that inquiry. So what can I do today to help uh, you know, bridge that gap, reduce the turnaround time? Very simple things you can do just to improve uh, that aspect, right? If you're and let's say if you, there's another study out there in classic B2B and other scenarios where you have, if you go and talk to a particular inquiry five times, two times or ten times, it makes a difference in terms of your ability to create a mind share with the student and their interest in buying a product or service from you, right? So how can we, some of these things can we automate, can we regulate, can we regiment, can we say that all of my inquiries will be treated exactly the same way? as uh, you know there should not be any difference and hence if you can do that the student experience improves and then your efficiency to you know deliver and you know uh, try to close those students you know, go up the third is uh, the, the the fourth aspect is the data to drive decisions so i mean i'll quote some simple examples uh, which probably will uh, you know help uh, you know uh, understand what can we do so i was talking to one of our customers uh, it's a career school in us um, and very interesting things, uh, you know, he sort of, uh, you know, uh, helped me understand on how they are using some of our system combined with the other analytics tools to basically uh, drive a decision and very simple points. So, for example, what they said, what he said is that um, if I have to, let's say, for the next quarter, uh, and they, are, they offer short-term courses, so uh, the velocity of you know, getting a lot of admissions is high, not maybe as true for uh, you know, some of you here, but th there they have to, let's say, drive 500 students in the next quarter, or let's say 1,000 students in the next quarter, right? Um, then what he said is that using technology and, and data, we were able to find out how many admissions officers do I need to be able to achieve my goal. So do I need uh, 10 of them? Do I need 20 of them? Do I need 15 of them? So the ability to understand uh, and, and project that number and try to staff up uh, today to be able to you know, achieve the goal is something that uh, they were able to do with you know, simple, uh, uh, not simple, but they were able to do uh, using and looking at the data. Second is um, another example is where, for example, um, if, I have a, uh, if I'm running a smaller or large call center, right, and I'm getting X number of inquiries, how do I make sure that all my staff uh, is busy, right, uh, at, the, at the optimum level? So, uh, in one of the uh, in one of our customer scenario, what they did was they were able to regulate the inflow of uh, inquiries by looking at the capacity to handle number of inquiries today, 
and then if let's say the volume of inquiry is going down they'll amp up the uh, tv advertisement for example or they'll amp up the radio advertisement right or online advertisement and then again bring up the inquiry visits to a certain level so that their call centers are fully busy so the idea is how can i optimize my 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 my, my bandwidth so that it is most productive uh, you know uh, for for the business right so that's the uh, another piece in how can i use data to drive decisions and data is for all types of things. I mean, these are the two examples I gave mostly focused on admissions because that's what we uh, mostly deal with. Uh, but I'm sure there is more out there in your respective other systems in, in other, uh, other uh, you know, learning management tools, for example, right? Those things will again be, uh, you know, there will be a ton of data, for example, to look at how students are progressing and, and so on and so forth. Finally, um, you know, the, uh, it's super important that the, the the person who is going to talk to my potential customer is enabled and uh, has, a, has the right tool set to offer the right experience because you know, ultimately, and I personally believe in this, so when let's say a salesperson goes and visits my customer, right, at that point of time, that salesperson, whatever he or she is talking, wearing, you know, the way he looks, uh, she looks, whatever, right, is the, is the full brand of Lead Squared what the customer looks at that point of time, right? So the experience offered at the front end which is the counselor, right? That is the, the, the counselor is actually carrying the full weight of the brand uh, at the point of interaction, uh, when they're interacting with the student. So enabling those people who are carrying your brand with some technology would, would help you, uh, would, would, I mean, there's enough evidence there to help the, the, the business or the, the org structure in, in offering, uh, uh, in driving the business outco outcomes for, for, you, for you. So that's again uh, an important piece, uh, what we have learned uh, from what we've seen and learned from the ed tech uh, firms. Um, quick quick uh, points uh, for how we can enable a counselor. So helping them identify out of so much, uh, you know, uh, X number of leads, inquiries, can I, whom do I contact, who is the best person to, to reach out, that kind of stuff, giving them that information, looking at the various signals emanating from, from leads and inquiries, that thing we can, uh, then uh, uh, making sure that there is enough automation built in so that we can pull the, uh, we can basically communicate with our leads to uh, inquiries so that they can buy from us and help the, and guide the counselors to appropriately, you know, target the pitch, um, you know, contextual counseling and, 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 and last piece is the analytics.